Hello, Iquil Yechrach, welcome up this spell fun, Hearts of Iron Fear, uh, Kaiserreich, aus der Koninkrijk der Nederlanden. And that's about all the Dutch I'm going to speak for today, with the exception, of course, of the descriptions. Anyway, hello everyone, hello, 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 welcome to the stream. Uh, we are playing Hearts of Iron 4, this is Kaiserreich, and we are the Dutch. Huzzah! Oh wait, thank you very much for the resubscription. Nine months now, that's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very much appreciated. Anyway, we have gone back to the save on the 8th of June 1937, which is the Dutch election. Last time we went with the Laced Lynx, um, because I kind of thought that the liberal game would be more interesting, but I was completely wrong. It was actually fairly dull. So we are going to instead go with the CNA retaining its dominance so that we can switch to market liberal as opposed to social democrat because there definitely seemed to be something weird going on in terms of the party popularity. So we're going to do this. We're going to go with the moderate right cabinet. Oop. And we are now reactionary Dutch. And this has opened up this focus tree instead. And we're going to be working with the LSP either trying to negotiate with the left or negotiating with the right or possibly even both yeah it kind of looks like it's going to be both and hopefully recovering the nation that way in fact this does look like it's going to take the longest to recover ah it'll be interesting i'm sure nothing's going to go wrong here nothing at all oh, in fact no it's because we're going to have to negotiate with one or the other Welfare negotiations, Red Front restriction, Communal diplomatic status, NAS, Landwacht protection, RSAP, negotiating with the extremists, and then Cordon Sanitaire against the right. Or we can negotiate with the right, we can limit the Landwacht, curtail unions, tariff negotiations, military influence negotiations, valley negotiations, nationalization, Negotiating with the streamists, and then we have the change in the various different sectors. Then eventually we get that. All right, let's just take this as it comes. So we probably need to wait until the negotiation stuff actually starts. I don't think I want to begin working on these, although we could still get the independent operations of the wolf pack. Maybe we should go... No, the Dutch historically went independent operations. I think I still want to go for that. How long is it? 35 days. We'll give it 7 days because that's how long you can hold a focus before you actually choose anything and we'll go from there. Alright, this will do. This is fine. Everything's fine. Now, did I do anything else in terms of like training ships or upgrading ships or anything like that? Hopefully this is all done already. I didn't upgrade... My destroyers. Did I? What are we building? We're already building the Amsterdam class, so I think I did already start the destroyer upgrade going. Fun Carlin too. Yeah, we did. Alright, so all the destroyers should be done. You're still training. You're still going. All of that's finished. Did we change our unit templates? We did, because we have no points left. Yeah, I think we were basically just going speed 5 and then rolling through things. Okay, so we've done the CNA's gamble has paid off, bypassed, which is going to allow us now to head back over here and hopefully start choosing some new stuff. No, nope, no, nope, still can't. Hopefully soon, maybe tomorrow. Also, we can modify the government. Partial mobilization, that's going to be as far as we can get without getting in a war. I wanted snorkels. Yeah, that's still a technology thing, though. There it is. The moderate right cabinet. The CNA gamble has paid off. Despite losing a large number of voters, the confessional bloc proved to be large enough to sweep away the opposition. The godless socialists have been thoroughly cowed and appear to be laying low for the time being. Now the time has come to form the next government, the fourth Calais cabinet. Many prominent CNA members are confident that this victory means that the CNA still carries the people's mandate and should thus form a cabinet by itself, albeit one which is only barely in the majority. 
However, since her majority is only marginal, any dissent from within the party itself could destabilize the cabinet that needs to be sturdy in these roaring times. Due to our reduced majority, the now decimated LSP have proposed joining our cabinet to assist us in a coalition, and some reactionaries are suggesting that this one electoral victory is not enough to deter the radical leftists. Some senior figures are even floating the idea of co cooperating with the VNH in order to use their resources to stamp out the Red Menace. Working with the Liberal LSP is precisely what I wanted to do. So we retain Henricus Collain as the head of government, who is a social conservative. Then we also get Jakob Partain, who is a political power gain. Wait, a political power gain as a foreign minister? That's amazing. Usually foreign ministers are completely useless. Armour production cost reduction with Adrian Dijkshorn, which is not very useful. And then Sheikh is political power and construction speed. Yeah, we'll work with the LSP. The ruling CNA, in an electoral bloc made of the Conservative and Confessional Parties, won the election with a tiny majority. Unwilling to rule alone, they invited the Liberal LSP party into a coalition. The country now has a distinctly centrist government that might be more willing to negotiate with the far right and the far left. The Dutch do love their elections. And we still can't choose, even though we now have done this. So we should get a bypass? There it is. Okay, now we can choose. So we need to choose negotiate with the left or negotiate with the right. How do we want to do this? <laughs> the events take too long to fire because he chose GMT and all events will now be one hour late. Oh, that's funny. Well, negotiating with the left kind of depends how far left. Although we're trying to get market liberal, which probably is more right-wing. I mean, we want to limit just how right-wing. But they are still, economically at least, right-wing. So yeah, I think that's what we do need to do. Minus 20 stability. Magnificent. Though it might not be an ideal situation, we would be best placed to negotiate with the less extremist elements of the nationalist VNH movement in order to bring some measure of peace to Dutch politics. Or the other option was ensure that the politics in the Netherlands remain rem relatively unbesmirched by extremism. It's important we consider negotiating with some of the more moderate elements of the left to ensure stability. See, the more moderate elements of the left is what I would consider to be the Social Democrats. You are actually doing fairly well. They have 20% of the vote, which is a lot more than the VNH, which is only 5%. Although, we saw that the Queen is refusing to work with the SDAP. So it would have to be the VDP. Mm. No, we're going to go with the right. I think. And we can now also choose a head of military intelligence. But again, I don't want to do that until we've actually like fully selected our market liberal government. Can we kick the Queen then? We don't want to. The Queen's on our side very much now. It was the previous playthrough where we were playing as the Social Democrats where she was like, nope, not working with them. But we still had no option to kick her, so it was basically untenable. Mozambique uh, Bush War. Though there are still some who believe the old-fashioned colonial wars are a relic of the pre-Welsh Creek era, recent events in Africa have shown that man's thirst for battle on the Dark Continent is not in any immediate danger of abating. Why is market liberal so good? Because it's just good business. It's the only reason. <laughs> no, it's also because they have a huge economic recovery thing. So what I didn't realize is when we were playing as the Social Democrats, we got this branch. Playing as the market liberals, we get all of this. And this is adding like extra resources, it's adding extra factories, it's adding extra infrastructure. It's, it's just a lot more stuff you get as the market liberals. So that's what we're going for. But mostly it's because I kind of like the market liberal idea for the Dutch. It's just good business. We only joined the Germans because they wanted our guns and we sold them. Because of you when I play I leave the Netherlands alone unless they bother me. <laughs> that seems entirely fair and reasonable. Ah, so how are things going to go this time I wonder.
still a little bit un uh, unfortunate that we can't go meddling in other people's affairs very much, but so it goes. We have not yet got the new fighters. We have got the new fighters, we just haven't built any. And it's the I-5s, right? Yes, we want to start building I-5s as a matter of some haste. And we should now be producing factories, which is great. And then those factories can go and produce those planes, which we're going to stick at the top. So they get the priority for all resources. Rise of the Mongol Empire. News and reliable sources of them are scarce in the vast plains of Mongolia. But it has recently come to light that the mad baron of Mongolia, Roman and Gern von Sternberg has risen to new heights and declared himself to be the successor to Genghis Khan, appropriately named Ungern Khan. Let's see if Flanders is doing a, any of their economic stuff. I doubt it. Unified Transportation Network. No, that's down here, isn't it? Yeah, it's that one. Factory output plus 10%, infrastructure construction speed plus 10. I think I also get that though. No, we've already got the two that we get. Always lovely to see English names for cities in Hartsabine. Why can't they just use the original names? Uh, because it's localized in English for an English audience? Or a English-speaking audience. I suspect if you're playing as the German version, it's in German names, or if you're playing the French version, it's the French names. It's just consistent. Uh, right. So we, we can now limit the Landwacht activities. Do we need both? Yeah, we need both. So let's curtail the unions first. If there is one thing that we can all agree on, it's that the threat posed by syndicalism and its trade union backers is it existential. However, the VNH's demands that we seriously damage them might prove to be destabilizing anathema to the Dutch working class. Or well, we could try to limit the Landwacht. I think we want to curtail the union rights with the Landwacht and then limit them. At least that's what I'm going to go for. Japan took one state. Hosian Kingdom was destroyed. No real surprises there. War propaganda is... Yeah, war support. Don't think I really want to spend 50 political power for that, though. Alas. Right, how's the training coming? It's coming along. Saudi Arabia has joined the Cairo Pact. Right, and how's Bulgaria doing against Romania? Romania is getting thoroughly chastised. And the Cairo Pact has not yet kicked off against the Ottomans, though I am sure that that's going to be happening soon. Ah, and here are the Marines. Aha. So we want the Marines in Zwolle. Just to all of them. Didn't actually mean to do that. But at least this way we can start everyone just training, even if they don't have all the gear that they actually require. Italian Republic has joined the Donau Ariabund. I don't remember that happening last time. Maybe. And then we were going to have the jungle fighter in charge of these guys, weren't we? No, it was the engineer. It was him. Although Vorstod Vorst is good. Mm, planning, though. He's a trickster, which is good. Getting Fortress Buster would also be nice. How often are we up against fortified coastal settlements? Actually, fairly frequently. And yet, having an engineer with... Well, I'm going to be using marines to attack rivers anyway. Oh, and that also comes with fort attack. Just not as much. No, I think... Oh, it's harder to level up. I think Fortress Buster is harder to level up. Oh! Oh! It requires Engineer to get Fortress Buster. Oh, we're going to go Engineer, then we can just train Fortress Buster immediately. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, we're going to do that for the Marines. So they're going to be really good at attacking fortified settlements and stuff. 
And there it is. Kingdom of Romania have taken two states. Iron Guard Romania have been annexed. And a bunch of the South Americans have also pieced out. So, Kingdom of Romania. Authoritarian Democrat. They are very much in Germany's back pocket. Although also pro-Canada, interestingly. Um, what happened down here? Argentina pieced out with these guys. Hey, Mordred, what's more horrifying? The Netherlands formed... Ditzland or Flanders formed Ditchland. Uh, I don't really know what the difference is. I mean, more horrifying I say is the Flanders formed one, but that's just because I'm Dutch, not Belgian. Okay, so training here. Oh dear. Yeah, some of you need to go and, you know, repair. One of the ships has almost sunk. Look how damaged he is. What the hell? Mexico has, Mexico has joined the Third International. Oh, interesting. None of you are damaged. None of you are damaged. None of you are damaged. Okay. Do I have enough command points for an advisor? You mean an attaché? Probably, but I'm still trying to make sure that my officers are promoted properly. The only one that probably can is Winkleman. I don't really have anything for him to do. Oh, actually, that's not true. Winkleman definitely wants to have defensive doctrine. And then the next thing were the admirals. Except I remember that this doesn't actually work for the admiral, so we need to manually check. You want to have concealment expert because you're my recon. You could actually potentially do a lone wolf. Because that's going to mean that their screens are always going to be terrible. In fact, superior tactician and lone wolf could be a really potent combination for like a destroyer fleet. I hadn't actually thought of that before. Ah, and you want to have marksman. Yeah, we'll grab that. More chance of inflicting criticals. Dutch politics is weirdly complicated. They had three social conservative parties, one Catholic, RKSP, two different sorts of Protestant, ARP and CHU, plus the market liberal LSP, social liberal VNH, and the social democratic SDAP, plus some non-democratic parties. Yeah, having voted in a Dutch election, they are complicated as hell. Like British politics in comparison are very, very simplistic. The first demand the VNH placed down was that we ban trade unions as they are. As the VNH is von Hilkerken states, thugs only seek to sabotage our nation. This would be neither stabilizing nor popular, however. Strong unions are vital, limit their rights but don't outright ban them, or ban the units as de unions as demanded. I'm going to say limit their rights but don't outright ban them. Well, actually, this is trying to get the right on our side. So I'm going to ban the unions completely. The market liberal. Unions have no place here. It's all based on what the market can do. Okay, now we need to choose lowering tariffs or limiting the Landwacht. I think what I want to do is, like, these three first and then these three. The VNH has demanded that we lower economic tariffs on imported goods, somewhat contrary to the nationalist leanings. While doing so might gain their support if it may prove unpopular with people who want cheap goods flood the market undercutting local businesses. But it's just good business. There should be no barriers to trade. In real history, the VDB, Social Liberals and the SDAP, Social Democrats merged right after World War II into the PVDA was still around, then some of them split to merge with the LSP to form the VVD, also still around. Crazy. 
Then in 1960s, the VVD split to form D66, which is the Social Liberal Party now, similar tradition to the VDB of this period. Who are the VDBs again? Ah, Social Liberals. Okay. Replacement for the Governor General. Oh no, we only get this guy. So there is almost guaranteed to be an Insul India civil war. Multiple candidates come forward. No, just one guy. Alright, well, I guess he's in charge. So when the Insul India reform comes forward. <laughs> I just had to do a double check on that portrait because he looks exactly like the uh, butcher in Gangs of New York. Exactly like him. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, let me just get a picture. You know, the uh, Daniel Day-Lewis character. <laughs> Amsterdam! Exactly. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> it is him. It is actually him. It's the same person. All he needs is the, uh, the hat. <laughs> well, this bodes well. Having him in charge of Insul India. Sorry, Indonesia. I mean, East Indies. <laughs> I can't see what could possibly go wrong here. Well, he's resigned. So we've got... Oh, that is him. De Jong hasn't actually resigned yet. Alright, so he's the guy that just left. He's going to be replaced at midnight. Right... Now. Nope, he's still here. I guess they have to accept or reject him. Still there. He, he's refusing to leave. And then the Sutaridio petition in the house. As decided by Henrik Collain about a year ago, the Sutaridio petition has been brought up to the House of Representatives, calling for a congress about the revision of the status of the Dutch East Indies, but specifically towards the promotion of equal status within the kingdom. When the vote is held, the petition is accepted or rejected. See, part of the question here is, what does that actually mean for the East Indies? I'm guessing that opens or closes part of their tree, but I don't know exactly how. Because here, if we have these things... Strength of the independence movement shrinks, strength of uh, the unity of the independence movement shrinks. So they do become smaller. And I guess it's the Congress of Batavia... ...or dissolve the Volksrad. Requires all of these three. And then either of those two. So, Stark and Buchschauer seems to be the only leader who can do either. I'm going to do the Congress of Batavia. I do feel like they should have equal rights within the nation so that they can be more productive and make us more money. Rejected. Nothing stops the free market. Yeah, I'm going to accept it. And we also just got construction. Now I want to get this first industry so I can get some more dockyard. Efficiency. Loyal East Indies is better for long-term profit. Yeah, I agree. And also the huge market over there. I mean, population over there.
Got to make sure that that's protected and wealthy enough to buy the products that the Dutch are producing. In your opinion, is it worth buying a stream deck? I'm umming and ahhing as to whether to get one. I don't have one. I have no real reason or need to get one. I've looked at them. There are some useful things that it could allow you to do, but nothing that hotkeys can do. Because what would it be? It would be like changing scenes easier. I don't really do scene changes. And if I did, I could hotkey that. Uh, allows you to play, like, sound effects and stuff. I don't know. What else can it do? Right, we can modify the government again. Is there anything else that I want to get? I don't think so. Alright, lower tariffs. Done. So now we need to choose whether to nationalise the German assets or limit Landwacht activities. I think we're going to nationalise the German assets and then we're going to work on these. Unbelievably, one of the VNH's demands is that we seize German property in the country. Though this might be incredibly dangerous, the VNH have made it a major demand and as such we cannot simply ignore it. The Totalist in the Baratia Commune. As the leader of the Baratia Commune's Maximus faction is recently elected head of state, Subras Chandra Bose gave a fiery speech to the electrified crowd in Calcutta today, promising that the new Totalist government would do whatever it took to deal a death blow to the colonial lapdogs in the northern dominion of India. The VNH demands that we protect Dutch businesses through tariffs to make foreign goods more expensive. The Netherlands is an export country, however, and overdoing this is risking a trade war we cannot afford, so the government must remain cautious. So we can say no to tariffs, we can say that some are acceptable, we can implement all the tariffs they want. We don't do tariffs. That's against good business. But I will be seizing all of the German stuff I can, because we're already in the Reichspact. What are they going to do? Kick me out? Oh well. I'm then free and independent to trade with anyone I want to. Although, just in case, <laughs> let's go and grab our armies and stick them on the border with Germany. Just to be sure. We don't want to be hasty about this or anything like that. Submarine operations finished. Let's go and work on the next one, which is going to be undersea blockade. Unless there's anything else that I should be working on. No, let's let's keep the submarines going. Submarine warfare is going to be my, my main thing. The Vela was sale. Uh, yes, we are supporting the foundation purchasing the grounds. We could sell it to the German aristocrat and then take the land back. I'm sure that wouldn't backfire. How short are we on equipment? We are still fairly short. And also, you should be blue because you're Marines. There we are. Greece has joined the Belgrade Pact due to a shared hatred for Bulgaria's growing power. Greece has decided to enter the Belgrade Pact with Serbia to take down Bulgaria once and for all. 